views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. The abrupt resignation of Eric Schneiderman as New York Attorney General in May after multiple women accused him of physical assault has opened the door for the bid to fill his seat in the upcoming Democratic primaries. Several experienced candidates are making their cases to New Yorkers with the hopes of getting a chance to represent New York in November. Stay with me on this episode of Perspectives. I'll introduce you to one of those candidates coming up on this edition with yours truly, Darren Hyman. What's on your mind? Let know. What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective which shines a light Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life Make a difference in what's your perspective Express what's in your heart and your mind Share your perspective What's your perspective And hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Perspectives I am Darren Hyman Of course we thank you for joining us We invite you to stay connected to Perspectives how do you do that exactly? Well, you can watch us here every week on Bronx Nets Channel 67. Of course, we've got the World Wide Web, www.bronxnet.org, and our social networking sites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, my professional page, Darren C. Hyman. There you can find some information and possibly also even some inspiration. Well, coming up on this edition of Perspectives, primary races have been heating up across the country as parties are selecting their candidate. Well, New York is actually holding an election for attorney general in 2018. Now, the closed primary election will be held on September 13th, 2018, not the usual September 11th. And the general election will be held on November the 6th. Now, former New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, a Democrat, who was reelected in 2014, resigned from August, or I should say office in May of 2018, amid allegations of sexual misconduct and abuse. He was temporarily replaced by New York Solicitor General Barbara Underwood, the first woman to hold a position. But joining me now in studio today is another woman who's looking to be the next woman to take that office. We're pleased to be joined by Alicia Eve, who is a candidate for New York State Attorney General. And welcome to Respect. It's good to have you. Uh, Darren, thanks so much for having me. Good, good. So talk to us a little bit about this. You're deciding to run for New York State Attorney General, throwing your hat in the ring. There are a few candidates out there. But what made you decide... I want to do this. Well, listen, I'm the daughter of two extraordinary public servants. My father, Arthur Reeves, served in the State Assembly with distinction for 36 years. Uh, 51 years ago, he crafted legislation that created the EOP and the HEOP program for, through which more than 100,000 New Yorkers, mostly African American and Latino and Asian uh, New Yorkers, have gone on to college and they otherwise would have been able to go. My mother taught English for 33 years and uh, in her retirement founded what became the largest and most comprehensive alternatives to incarceration for women in the state of New York. So I'm the daughter of two great public servants who taught me that those of us who can fight must stand up and fight for those who can't. And that is, in short, why I'm running for Attorney General. I am 54 years, of old, uh, 54 years of age, and I have never witnessed anything like what we are witnessing right now from the President of the United States, who is assaulting women's rights, reproductive rights, immigrant rights, LGBTQ rights, environmental rights, voting rights, rolling back all the positive criminal justice reforms that took place nationally under President uh, Obama. So we need more than ever an attorney general who knows how to not only fight, but fight and win against this assault by Donald Trump. And at the same time, we need someone who's best prepared to deal with the myriad of challenges we have at home. Mm. I am running as the most qualified, most prepared, most experienced candidate to do just that. When you talk about being the most qualified, most prepared, what makes you the most qualified, most prepared? Well, I've been a lawyer in New York for 28 years. One of my opponents became a member of the New York Bar six days ago. <laughs> uh, wonderful person. She's a professor. Uh, but I've been fighting for social justice my entire adult life. 
Um, I'm a product of the school system in New York State, uh, the public school system. Um, my first job out of Harvard Law School was clerking for the first African American to serve a full term on the state's highest court. So right out of the gate, for two years, right after I graduated from law school, by the way, I went there with someone named Barack Obama and <laughs> someone named Michelle, um, but right out of the gate, I'm having discussions with jurists on our state's highest court for two years about the most fundamental legal issues of our time based upon the state's constitution and the state statute. Um, went to Washington, joined a firm. In the 28 years that I've been a lawyer, and I've got more courtroom experience across the state by far, by far than any other candidate in this race, but the case that I'm most proud of is a case where I represented hundreds, hundreds of women incarcerated in District of Columbia prisons against the District of Columbia because of prison conditions they were living in. Some of my clients felt that they needed to give a sexual favor to a prison guard to be able to visit their children, something that they were automatically entitled to, to do. They didn't, they didn't need to do that, but they felt compelled because that's what some prison guards were telling them they had to do. One of my clients had her legs shackled to a hospital bed as she brought a child into this world. This was happening in the nation's capital, the most powerful city and the most powerful nation on earth. It was inhumane, it was unjust, it was unconstitutional. I filed suit and we litigated, we fought hard, and we won. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about being a champion for women, a champion for the powerless, a champion for the vulnerable, a champion for our fellow New Yorkers who are living in fear in the shadows, for me it's not rhetoric, I've done it. Mm -hmm. I've done it and I am going to bring all of my experience to bear as a seasoned litigator, as counsel to Joe Biden, as counsel to Hillary Clinton, as the first woman and the first African American to be the chief economic development advisor to a governor of our state in the state's history, I will bring all that experience to bear uh, to fight and stand up on behalf of the 20 million people who call New York State home. Let me talk a little bit about here, closer to home, New yes. York. Uh, a lot of people live in public housing. NYCHA has been a problem. How do you propose dealing with NYCHA, given the fact that you've got a lot of people who are living in the worst of conditions, uh, and when we look at the administration, uh, in need of a total, total overhaul? How do you deal with that as Attorney General? I am absolutely outraged, and I hope every single New Yorker is outraged by the horrific mismanagement of NYCHA. Many of your viewers probably know this, but we have employees who were falsifying records tied to the testing of lead paint. I, that is absolutely outrageous. My father authored the state's lead paint law. We all know the children who um, you know, are eating lead paint because they're, they're chipping away um, at a windowsill or something. They, when they get exposed to lead paint, they are potentially being harmed for the rest of their lives in terms of brain damage, mm -hmm. brain damage. We have people in NYCHA apartments who are living in places where there's black mold, which is permanently affecting their breathing, They're, that are rat infested, roach infested. We all should be morally outraged, but as attorney general, if they don't clean up their act by the time I am sworn in on January 1, I guarantee you that they will under my watch. I will civilly investigate and potentially criminally prosecute people who are knowingly under oath falsifying reports uh, that go to the health and safety and well-being of New Yorkers who live in NYCHA apartments. As the state attorney general, your job is also to be, for lack of a better word, a public advocate for the victim. Yes. What do you look at in terms of New York City? Because uh, when we talk about New York City, a lot of the things that we're dealing with here, housing, yes. uh, rent laws. Talk to me about your platform. How do you plan on dealing with these unfair rent hikes that go on? And then the housing discrimination, because in many of our communities across New York City, uh, you've got people moving out and the fear of gentrification. How do you deal with this as Attorney General? Well, first of all, part of the reason why I believe I'm the most qualified and most prepared and most experienced candidate is that it's not for me just talking points about dealing with housing issues. I've actually dealt with those issues in the past on behalf of New Yorkers. Case in point, when I was the Chief Economic Development Advisor to Governor Cuomo, overseeing 11 agencies in state government, one of those agencies was Homes and Community Renewal, 
On my watch, I directed the issuance of hundreds of subpoenas against slum landlords who were seeking to jack up rents because they were representing, well, we're doing all these repairs and we're spending all this money and therefore we ought to have, uh, we ought to be able to increase uh, rents on New Yorkers. And uh, agencies were getting complaint after complaint after complaint from people who said, well, wait a minute, why is my rent going up and I'm still living in this place uh, that doesn't have adequate heating, doesn't have adequate lighting? And so we issued hundreds of subpoenas to landlords across the city and across the state. And we said, give us the proof of these repairs, give us the proof of these investments. And if we don't have the proof under oath that you've done this, then no, you can't increase the rent. But we have so many uh, tenants across the city and across the state who are being evicted unjustly and illegally for alleged violations of leases. And that simply is not the case. As Attorney General, I will aggressively investigate and prosecute any landlord who takes uh, New Yorkers for a ride. Coming up after the break, we'll talk a little bit about criminal justice reform. What do you do with Rikers Island? That's the topic of conversation. And then the legalization of marijuana, for or against? These are questions that uh, Licia Eve will answer for us, a candidate for New York State Attorney General. Be right back in a few, right after this. make retirement happen. After all, you made this vacation happen. Double points with every purchase. Cleverly merging promotions. Love it. Cross-referencing travel sites and booking all your flights with those vouchers. I got us bumped. They were like, oh, but now they're like, <laughs> aloha. You aced this vacation. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. neighbors and best friends. <laughs> I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. And we're back here on Perspectives. Our topic of conversation, the race for New York State Attorney General. Our candidate in studio, Alicia Eve, who is sharing a little bit about her platform and what she would do if elected to the office of New York State Attorney General. Uh, you know, when we talk about here in the five boroughs across New York City and really across the state, one of the things that is a major challenge, especially in communities of color, are criminal justice reform. Yes. And the fact of, well, let's start right off here, Rikers Island, we talked about it before the break. Are you for or against the closing of Rikers Island before 10 years is out? Absolutely. Rikers Island needs to be closed and it needs to be closed as quickly as possible. We can do this well uh, in, in less than 10 years. We got to do it. We got to do it. It's going to be hard, but it must be done. Khalif Browder was one of the people that really rose to the attention of the Rikers Island situation, right. given the fact that he did not even get a chance to go to trial right. uh, and died before even getting a trial. When we look at the criminal justice system and you look at a young man who's had the opportunity to, who did not have the opportunity, I should say, to what we call due process, yes. how, do we, how do you address that as Attorney General, given the fact that we've got courts that are backlogged and you could be uh, you know, out for months and even sometimes years 
before we even see that judge. Well, Darren, I am so glad that you raised this issue generally and, and, and this one in particular because of the range of issues that I as Attorney General will focus on. In many respects, I believe the criminal justice is, there's, there's no issue that's more important. Because at the end of the day, if New Yorkers don't have faith that their criminal justice system is fair, little else matters. Um, one of the critical forms that needs to take place and that I will be relentless in focusing on is making sure that every single New Yorker who was arrested for a crime has their constitutional right to a speedy trial. We should not have New Yorkers. We have thousands of New Yorkers in jails across the city and across the state at this very moment who have been there not days, not weeks, but months simply accused of a crime and there because they uh, didn't have the cash bail to be released. Uh, and in many cases in, in, in jail for more than a year, that is absolutely a violation of our U.S. Constitution, but also state laws. Attorney General, listen, I think the DAs across the state, by and large, do a, a pretty good job. There clearly have been uh, major issues with some, but I'm going to be on the backs of district attorneys across the city and across the state and ask them, wait a minute, somebody has been in a jail, has been accused, hasn't had their trial, it is now 30 days. What's the problem? We have to have much more aggressive monitoring and oversight so that thousands of New Yorkers, no matter where you may call home, if you've been arrested, whether you think you're guilty or not, if you've been arrested, you are guaranteed your right to a speedy trial. And what happened to that young man? is such an outrage and um, I haven't met his family, but to anyone who cares about these issues, what I will say to you that I will use every fiber of my being, every experience and my commitment to social justice and my commitment uh, to criminal justice reform in particular to make sure that his death is not in vain. Let me go here with cash bail. You talked about it, I didn't get to it yet, but what's your position on cash bail? I support elimination of cash bail. I support the legalization of marijuana. I support strongly the expungement of every single conviction for recreational use of marijuana because we have so many kids, particularly in our community, where they got picked up uh, for smoking, you know, weed, but their wealthy white counterpart would never get picked up. Now they have a conviction on their record, which makes it harder for them to get a student loan, which makes it harder for them to get a job, which makes it harder for them uh, to, to move in some uh, housing units, depending on what city they live in. So I support the legalization of marijuana, support the expungement of records. We need to expand the use of drug courts. We need to decriminalize addiction and do much more to provide treatment for people. If someone is has the courage to deal with their substance abuse problem, they shouldn't be in a situation where they've got the courage to get help, but then they're told, oh, wait a minute, we got a three-month waiting list. That's a recipe for failure. So we've got a lot of work to do. And, you know, as I said, one of my priorities is pushing back against all that Donald Trump uh, has done and is seeking to do to undermine so many of the rights and values that we hold dear. But the fact that we have an unfair criminal justice system is something that New York State owns. Mm -hmm. And on my watch as attorney general, I will fix. I don't like talking too much about the guy here on, on, on our show because there's so many people talk about him already. But let's yeah. talk about the present for a minute because... Uh, the New York State Attorney, the former New York State Attorney General, Eric yeah. Schneiderman, was known for uh, looking and investigating yes. uh, the former, uh, the president, the current president, and saying that there should be some charges and there was a current investigation. As Attorney General, what did, would you be looking at? What would you, without tipping your hat all the way, uh, in terms of the president? Because we know his business dealings are here. We yes. know a lot of things that are coming under question start right here in New York. Absolutely. How would, you, uh, how would you address this here? This office is second only to Bob Mueller in holding the President of the United States accountable. As you mentioned, his assets are here, his residence is here, the residence of most of his cronies, Michael Cohen, uh, uh, is here. Uh, his business dealings, most of the interactions took place here. And so the Office of Attorney General, because we have something called the Charities Bureau, that's the reason why Barbara Underwood was able to investigate the Trump Foundation and now is going to be commencing the litigation. I would pick up from where Barbara Underwood left off and put the effort 
uh, on steroids. One of the concerns that I have right now is the President of the United States has clearly indicated his plans to pardon people who may be New Yorkers who may have violated state law. And one of the things I've done is called upon the governor to immediately have a special session of the legislature so that they can close what we call the pardon loophole. Because right now, uh, the Attorney General of New York has some ability to go after someone who has received a federal presidential pardon. But New York has something called the pardon loophole. We need to toughen up our laws similar to what's uh, in existence in many other states to make it easier for the Attorney General to go after someone uh, that he pardons. Because uh, the President of the United States only has the power to pardon for federal crimes. He does not have the power to uh, pardon anyone who's been convicted or alleged to have committed violations of state law based upon state acts. And as attorney general, I will aggressively go after anybody who, do, who does that, whether they have received a federal pardon or not. I talked about uh, the president. Let me talk about the governor for a minute because uh, there's been the allegations of corruption with the governor. Uh, you know, you've had people close to the governor who's been to jail. New York State has the largest number of elected officials who are really going behind bars now. How do you deal with the issue of corruption? And how do you answer the critics who say, if you're elected, you're going to have to work with the governor. So how do you police the governor, monitor the governor? And you've also received an appointment by the governor. So talk to us a little bit about how do you deal with that, given the fact that uh, that's out there, but it needs to occur. Darren. I'm 54 years of age. When I was seven years old, 1971, my father was the very first person to walk into the prison at Attica during the Attica prison riots. And the reason why he did that is because there were prisoners, uh, when my father was a young member of the State Assembly, who wrote him and wrote other legislators, but my father was the only one that answered their letters. They were pleading for someone to deal with the issue of the prison conditions they were living in. My father walked into that prison never knowing whether he would come out, of al come out alive. And so when people talk about independence, my father risked his life to fight for better opportunities for New Yorkers and to deal with unjust prison conditions that they were living in. That is when I'm made of. So when people talk about being independent of the governor, that's a piece of cake from me. You know, I understand what good public servants can do to transform communities, to transform lives, to transform this state. And I am angered that we have conviction after conviction after conviction of people who should be holding themselves to the highest moral and ethical standards and who have failed to do so. Because they give every other public servant a bad name. And you know, this is such a critically important issue because people have to have faith in their government. Mm -hmm. In me, you have a fierce uh, advocate, an independent advocate, a proven fighter for social justice, and a proven fighter for ethics reform. I believe we need to get rid of Jay Cope. We need to get rid of the Legislative Ethics uh, Council. We can't no longer ask members of the legislature to police themselves, because that ain't working. Uh, and so we ought to have an independent body that can make referrals to the Attorney General's office and bypass the Governor's office so that the Attorney General has free reign to do what she needs to do to prosecute corruption. In the absence of that, however, I will be uh, an investigator and a fierce aggressor to root out corruption in this state wherever, wherever I find it. Lisa Eve is our guest in studio. She's the candidate for New York State Attorney General. Stay with us. We've got more. We'll get some final comments from her in just a few. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. We're but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. And we're back here on Perspectives. Darren Jaime here with you, continuing our conversation with Licia Eve, who is the candidate for New York State Attorney General. Now, in the beginning, you talked a little bit about your history, your resume, working yes. with uh, former Vice President Joe, Joe Biden. Biden and working with uh, Hillary Clinton. How has that shaped and molded 
a little bit of what you're doing and how you are today. Well, I'm extraordinarily blessed, uh, Darren, that I had an opportunity to work for such great Americans. When I was counsel to Joe Biden, he was a top Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee. The two issues that I advised Joe more than any other were immigration, and implementation of the Violence Against Women Act, which he authored working with hundreds of uh, organizations across the country that support survivors of domestic violence and physical assault. It was my job to help him implement that law across our country. And here we are uh, almost a quarter of a century later in dealing with those issues. So I understand, I understand the suffering of uh, survivors of domestic violence and physical assault. And I understand the need to leave no stone unturned to hold their uh, abusers accountable. This is not an issue that's new for me. I've been in the trenches on this issue for many years. I was counsel and Homeland Security Advisor to Hillary Clinton for four and a half years, fighting in the trenches with, with Hillary to advance women's rights, to advance environmental rights, to advance civil rights, to advance voting rights. Uh, I work with organizations across this state and across this nation to craft something called the Count of Vote Act. It had felon reenfranchisement for the nation, election day registration for the nation, early voting for the nation. The New York Times editorialized it as the gold standard for election reform. This should be the law of our land. And before, during, and after 9-11, I was Hillary's Homeland Security Advisor. The very first piece of legislation that the Senate and the Assembly enacted after the September 11th the terrorist attacks was legislation that I crafted that the president signed into law to provide uh, much needed relief to those uh, family members surviving uh, of those who were killed in responding to the attack. So my roots in this state run deep, my commitment to this city and to this state run deep. Uh, and I learned from the best. My parents, mm -hmm. uh, who taught me about courage and conviction in the face of not only political expediency, be, expediency, but in the case of my father, risking life and limb. And from Hillary and Joe, uh, two extraordinary public servants uh, for whom I had the honor of fighting the trenches with, they taught me about perseverance and never giving up and doing everything you can to protect the most vulnerable and the powerless amongst, uh, amongst us. That's what I've been doing all of my adult life. It's not rhetoric for me. It's not about a press release. It's certainly not about you know, a classroom exercise. It has been my life's work. That's the kind of lawyer I've been for 28 years, and that gives you a glimpse of the kind of attorney general I will be. We'll leave it there. Lisa Eve, our guest in studio. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Candidate for New York State Attorney General Alicia Eve, and she's been our guest here on Perspectives. We want to thank you for watching. Now, we can't tell you who to vote for, but we can tell you, please go out and exercise your right to vote. A quick reminder, uh, the primary date, not September 11th as we usually have done, because, of course, it's in honor of September 11th. It's now Thursday, September 13th, so please go out and exercise your right to vote. For all of us here on the Center Perspectives, our producer, Curly Burton, and the rest of the staff, we thank you for joining us. Stay tuned to Perspectives next week. Take care. What's on your mind? Let him know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you're making moves solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective, which shines a light. Because it might make